All right, hey, organic chemistry. So these are gonna be the beginning of our next new unit notes on isomerism and configuration. So make sure you have your isomerisms and configurations note packet, and we're gonna to go to the beginning of page one. So first, let's start by looking at the following molecule. From our last chapter on IUPAC nomenclature, how would I name the following compound? Well, it has one, two, three, four, five carbons, they're all single bonds. If you remember, the way that I should name this, five is pent, and all single bonds is a, so this will be pentane. Okay, now is there another way to connect these atoms instead of directly straight across in a chain? Mm, well, I'm gonna make pentane like this instead. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And you should know from your prior knowledge that this is the same thing as this. And so what if instead of me arranging the five carbons like this, and this is C5, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, H12. What if I took one of these carbons and made it switch places with one of these hydrogens in the middle, right? So I took this N carbon and I moved it here. So what if I did this? One, two, three, four, five. And so I'm gonna draw this blown out. What if it was C, H, 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 right, so that's CH3, I have a C, now it has another carbon on it, and then there's a hydrogen, and then I have the other carbon hydrogen, and then the other carbon and three hydrogens. Do I still have five carbons? One, two, three, four, five carbons, so it's still C5. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, still 12 hydrogens. Well, how can I tell the difference between a straight chain pentane and something that if I wanted to name this, how would I name this using IUPAC nomenclature? Well, now my longest chain is four, so that's butane, and on one, two, three, or one, two, on my second carbon, I have a methyl group. This is two methyl butane. How can I tell the difference, or how do I know the difference between the C5H12s if I didn't have the names? There's a special name for what all of this is called. If I have two of the same compounds, they have the same molecular formula, but they have different structures and thus different names. We call those isomers. All right, so we just began to draw isomers. Isomers are compounds, and write this definition down. Isomers are compounds with similar molecular formulas but different structures and thus properties. Those are what isomers are. So above, I have C5H12. Both of these are C5H12, but they're arranged differently. And these are special types of isomers. These are known as constitutional isomers. Constitutional isomers have different IUPAC nomenclature. Nomenclature. the same molecular formula but a different what we call connectivity 
And this is a buzzword for us in organic chemistry with isomers. Connectivity means it's connected differently. And you could clearly see with our example here that these carbons, even though it's still five carbons and 12 hydrons, hydrogens, they're all connected differently. Okay, so make sure you get these definitions down. And now we're going to look at another set of examples. So let's look at some constitutional or structural isomers of C7H16, which is known as, if I have seven carbons, this has the rule CNH2N plus 2. This is an alkene. This is heptane. So let's draw out all the different structural isomers or constitutional isomers of, S, um, of heptane, if we can. So I could just do a straight chain. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is known as heptane. Instead of having a straight chain, I could take one of the N groups and put it on on the second carbon, not on the N, but right? instead of having it connected to this carbon, I could have this N connected here. And then the rest. This would be, longest chain would be six carbons. On the second carbon is a methyl group. This is two methyl hexane. Okay? Still has C7H16. Check yourself. This still definitely has C7H16, but now it has a different name and different connectivity. Now, instead of me just moving this methyl group onto this carbon, what if I took it and I moved it to the other carbon? What if I moved it to here? This would now be 3-methylhexane. And again, these are different constitutional isomers of heptane. I just took the ending, right? I took this methyl group and I moved it to an inner carbon. And I'm moving it again. Now, what would happen if I move this methyl group again onto this next carbon? Would that be a different compound? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. This would be, would this be called, if this is 2-methylhexane and this is 3-methylhexane, would this be then 4-methylhexane? Would that work? No. This would not work because this is actually just, remember, the rules with IUPAC nomenclature, you number it left to right and right to left, one, two, three. This is actually the same as 3-methylhexane. So this isn't a different one. Why is it the same? This is just this flipped. Like, it, I just did this. I flipped it and now it's um, the mirror image. So this is not another one. These two are the same thing. It's just the way that I would number it. Instead of numbering it from left to right, one, two, three, this one I'd have to number from right to left. And we know from naming IUPAC nomenclature, we know that we could do that with our numbering system. Okay? Now instead of moving, now I can't move the methyl group anymore because if I move it over one more, I just get two methyl. And then if I move it over again, I'll get heptane. So now let me move and make another methyl group on the inside. So what if I drew this compound? I had four carbons, and then I had a methyl group here, a methyl group here, and a methyl group here. This would be two, two, three, trimethyl butane. So the game that I'm playing here is I'm just taking carbons that are on the outside and moving them onto the inside. Um, what if instead of having three carbons, I only moved two carbons? So instead of having this two, two, three, what if I just had two, two dimethyl pentane? I moved this carbon back here. And now I have 2,2-dimethylpentane. Um, I could move a methyl group again, move it here. And I could have 2,3-dimethylpentane. 
I could move the methyl group again. And I could have, oops, no, not here. Here, sorry, not here. This would be 2,4-dimethyl pentane. And you get the idea. So we just drew a bunch of different um, isomers of heptane. There are about three or four more that we could draw, but I wanted to get you the idea of different connectivity. Now, what if, what if, instead of moving methyl groups, I just put two carbons together, right? Here's heptane. What if I took the two carbons on the end and connected them and made a ring? Would this still... Heptane is C7H16. Would a ring still give me C7H16? Uh, remember, carbon needs to have a total of four bonds. So each of these carbons has two hydrogens. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. This is C7H14. These do not have the same molecular formula. The... Ring does not have the same molecular formula. And so there's um, cyclohexane. Oh, sorry, cycloheptane, not hexane, my bad. Cyclo cycloheptane has two fewer hydrogens. Therefore, cycloheptane is not a constitutional isomer, is not an isomer. I'm going to call it a constitutional isomer. It is not a constitutional isomer of heptane. Okay, so it's very important that we understand that an isomer is all of these need to have the same molecular formula and prove to yourself that all of these do. This is going to be C7H16. This is going to be C7H16. But if I go and make a ring out of it, I get C7H14. The ring does not have the same molecular formula. It is not a constitutional isomer. Not an isomer. Okay, so this is where I wanted these notes to end for right now. Um, be on the lookout for the next set of video notes and your first set of practice on trying to draw some isomers.